Tell us what the emotional journey has been like for you this year. Obviously, not being on the 53, was that a letdown? Were you down? Uh, were you hoping you'd be claimed elsewhere to be on the 53 since we haven't talked to you in yeah. quite a while? Um, it's obviously, it was the goal to make the team initially, but uh, my mindset was whatever happened, um, I was going to learn from it, take it as a, a challenge, take it as an opportunity to learn from. I think I heard um, E. Rob talk about that in terms of his leadership. I was just gonna, I was going to do that, just whether I was a pack, practice squad player or not. Um, take it as an opportunity to learn, and so that's that was my mentality. Um, whether I got claimed or not, again, I wasn't going to hope for one thing or the other. Whatever happened, I was going to be happy with it and just attack that opportunity. So, so you you weren't especially down that week of September first, second, third. It was just went. Um, was I down? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like if you don't accomplish a goal that you had, you're going to be a little bit disappointed, so yes. But I had, I mean, that, that whole day happens really fast, 24 hours, and you find out you're, they're going to sign you back to the practice squad. So it's like you can be down for a week, and that's not going to help you. So, you know, you can have a, a sh the, the shorter amount of time that you feel down about that, the better, I think. So you just move on. And, again, I just tried to be the best practice squad player that I could be. You, you're one of the unique players where you've been here for all of it, 2019, mm -hmm. 2020, and now 2021. All three very unique seasons. Lucky how, to be here. How do you here. get this headed in the right direction? Bill, taking what you've seen in 19 mm -hmm. and 20 and putting it into 21. Yeah. Um, I'd be naive to say that I know like all the answers just because I've been here. I'm still a young guy in the NFL relative to a lot of other people that know better. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's some of the messages our coaches are preaching every day, sticking together, continuing to work, trust the process. Um, a lot of coaches and players on this team and organization have found success in the NFL. So I got to trust that they know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, it's just going to, Take more work. Every guy trying to do their job as as well as they can. Um, you know, having the attention to detail that you need to win in the NFL. Uh, I'm sure Flo has said this, but the margin of victory is slim. So it's going to take those little details. And I see guys working on it, and so we just got to take those those small details and go out there and execute on Sundays with them. Your opinion. Uh, obviously, pressure is built once you start losing, and now you guys have lost seven straight. How much of a relief would a win be? Uh, I mean, you just you you go out every Sunday and just try to win. Um, if you're not, if you don't have the mentality that you can win every game, then it's going to be even harder to win. So you just need to go out there with confidence. I don't know if this is actually answering your question, but like you're going out there expecting to win. If you don't win, you're disappointed. You got to learn from the mistakes. If you do win, you're happy for that plane ride home or whatever the rest of the Sunday is. And then the next week, then that Monday, you got to start preparing for the next game. So I don't know if relief is the right word. I think you're just, you want to win every Sunday. So when you do, you're happy. If you don't, you learn from the mistakes and then you prepare for the next team. Yeah, I think I'm what was going through your mind that week after Malcolm was placed on IR? And then it's you, Jared, and, and then they signed Duke on the practice squad. And the idea is that one of the three of you is going to get moved up. So what's going through your mind during that week as far as, am I going to be the guy? What's going to happen? Here? Yeah. Um, for me, I tried to have the mindset whether whatever decision the coaches made, I would be happy with it or fine with it, and I would work the same way. So one other goal I had when I signed back to the practice squad was I'm going to try to work and prepare like I was on the active roster. So my routine really didn't change that much. Still watched, you know, film and um, studied all the plays the same so that if they did decide to call me up or sign me to the roster, I would be ready to go. Um, and I felt like I did a good job of that last week. So there was some of that anticipation. Am I going to be the guy that call they call up? Um, if, they, if I am, then I'll be ready and I'll just stick to my same routine, which I think is what happened pretty much. So Patrick, the RPO offensive style that to what is utilizing often here, that he used at Alabama. I don't think you had experience with that particular system in your match, right? At so, Cal, at Cal I, so yeah, we did. Yeah, good right? amount. So, so, so for the RPO to like 
work on uh, was was Goff there when you were there or no? He was, but I didn't play that much with him on on offense. That was my first two years, and then um, I had Davis Webb, who's on the practice squad of the Bills now. So I actually got to see him last weekend. And then we had two other quarterbacks my last two seasons. So for the RPO offense to be as effective as it can be, and, and, and can you tell me what your thoughts are on that and sort of um, what, what the benefits of that style of offense can be? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's different, obviously, with college and NFL because college you can go three yards downfield um, with the linemen, whereas in the NFL it's only one. So that plays a little bit of a role into it. And then in the NFL um, – you know, just with my experience, I don't know about all other colleges, but it's a lot more complex, the different reads and, and the defenses you're seeing. So, um, like you said, Tua has experience in that. Um, he's good at it. He's good at seeing the conflict defender or whoever he's reading. Um, but, yeah, it's just like it's a numbers thing. So the quarterbacks are seeing it, the line's seeing the, the numbers, who, who they're putting in the box, who we want to put in conflict with the various routes. And uh, I think Tua, you know, does a good job um, making those decisions. And as a running back, the best mentality you can have is expect the ball. If he pulls it and throws it, that's out of your hands. Um, so you just expect the ball. Look at your run read. Now you've experienced uh, the league from a practice squad perspective as well as a 53 perspective. Is there any part of being on the practice squad that makes you feel like you're not fully part of the team, any sort of emptiness, anything that you experienced like that before last week? I'd say the the first week during warm-ups when I was watching everyone else warm up and have their pads on, I'm just on the side with sweats and a T-shirt. Um, I was just, I felt like I wanted to be out there, you know what I mean? And that's that's just the, the feeling you, I think you should have as a competitor. Like, man, I wish, I just missed putting on pads today and playing in a real a real game. So that was something to get used to. Um, but as far as like being on the team, like you're still like an integral part of practice and game plan. Like I, you know, you have to study the opponent and, and how they are going to attack our team. And so you want to give the best look on scout team that you can or on special teams that you can. Um, but yeah, it's just like, I, I tried to have pride in being the best, best practice squad, best teammate that I could be during that period when I was when I was on practice squad. But, yeah, it's like watching on Sundays is probably the biggest difference. Did you travel to New England or Las Vegas? Or yeah. You did? There was, they're allowed to travel, I think, a certain amount of practice squad players, so I was, I was one of those guys. Great. And on game days for home games before you joined the 53, you, you were situated where during the home opener, for example, this year? Um, you have a workout, so that's, I guess, that's another difference. So they have the practice squad guys come to the facility workout. And then you can, you know, certain guys are in boxes or watching at home, whatever it is. Yeah. Was it home for you at all for any game this year? Or from yeah. A, it yeah. was. Yeah. How weird was that, watching a game from knowing you're a team employee but not at the stadium for a home game? Um, I felt like a Dolphins fan. <laughs> Do you prefer to watch it from the game or at home? Uh, I, I think with the, the reason they have you watch at home sometimes is like with COVID. And I, I actually don't know, like, all the rules for it. Um, whether I prefer to watch it from home or at the stadium, I'd rather just be playing in the game. So, I like my my favorite game to watch was was last Sunday. I remember Zach Thomas telling me years ago? That's how old I am. That um, that you like, you, yeah, thanks. And when he was injured, <laughs> well, I covered the team in 02 to 04. So that was a while ago. But Zach said that he, like if he was injured at home, he would like cook out. He would like grit the grill. I just thought that that was so crazy to imagine Zach Thomas while his team was playing. Yeah. Like, Sometimes it's funny because I'll grab like a coffee right before or something, and uh, I see all the people. I live relatively close to here, so I see people going to the stadium, and I'm just like a random dude with a coffee in my hand. I'm wondering, like, they obviously don't know who I am, but I'm about to go watch the game just like them, but I know just a little bit more about what's going on in the well, game. You, do. you were an effective third down <laughs> pass catcher. You really are. People know you who you are. Catch it on you, you get recognized, don't you? Patrick? Very rarely. Very rarely. Just, just one last thing on this. I'm sorry. Hal. So the home games so far, Patrick, uh, have been a combination of being at home or being in a box for you. Uh, the only handful, very few home games so far this yeah. year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So you finally get into a game, and not only get into a game, you make a critical third down conversion, and there's this yellow flag on the ground what goes through your mind at that point um 
I mean, you kind of you have to move on to the next play at that point. Uh, I actually didn't know what the penalty was, and I'd always every time I watch it on TV or watching football, and I see the person do the, the first down point, I always thought that was dumb growing up. I was like, that's what you're supposed to do, get a first down. But then when you get to the NFL and you realize how hard it is to get a first down and then a third down conversion to first down, I got really excited. I did the point. So I was a little, <laughs> I was embarrassed that I let myself do that. And then I get, and then when I especially see it when people, there's a penalty and it's called back, it's like, oh, well, he definitely, he looked dumb doing that. But um, I was just, I was really excited. I was in the game and making a play. So, so what, I, I, but just the excitement of just converting on, on, on a third down play. I, that, I always told myself I was never going to do it. And then um, then you get a, a, a big first down, and, and uh, sometimes your emotions just do that. Um, but, yeah, no, I was just excited to, to make a play for the team and keep the drive going. And then, like you said, the, you see the yellow flag, move on to the next play. Um, and uh, I don't think I was in on the next one. They had a different personnel grouping in. Um, but you can't, let that, you can't let that affect the rest of your game. Of all the scenarios that could have happened last week in terms of you, uh, Jared, or Duke being elevated, moved to the 53, the best scenario happened for you in terms of you getting a regular 53 contract, not being elevated just for a week. I imagine financially it's better as well. Uh, what Was that pleasing to you? That's the best possible outcome for you personally? Mm, I, think, I mean, yes. I think he's the honest answer, but it's – I don't, want to, I don't want that yes to sound like I'm happy that other guys weren't elevated. Obviously, I'm just – I was going to trust whatever decisions the coaches made and um, be happy with it. I wanted to ask you one more thing. I know that you're uh, a key part of the social uh, initiatives for the Dolphins. Yeah. Right? You and Byron are key members. Yeah, we, there's a few of us, the social, the social impact committee. Social impact. Yeah. So what's one thing that you guys have been able to, you know, do – that you're particularly proud of or you think is, is in quite interesting? There's a lot of stuff that I've enjoyed that, um, doing with the, with the committee. But I, one in particular this year that we did that was cool was we donated 100 grand to Palm Beach County, uh, Miami-Dade, and Broward County um, to the, the school districts. And what we wanted to do is not just hand them the money and they can do whatever they want. We kind of wanted to see the – projects have measurable impact and so the thing with the palm beach county is they discovered they have i think it, i don't want to misquote the numbers but it's around like fifteen thousand families that don't have stable wi-fi at home and then you guys can obviously imagine the disadvantage of a, a kid would have just not having good wi-fi at home um so they're creating this wi-fi mesh network in palm beach county um that's another issue in itself but they need these wi-fi extenders to go in the homes that the the family can plug in and uh, use. So those need to all be configured to the Palm Beach County Wi-Fi network, all that. So we actually had those brought to the stadium and I think we did over 500, just configured them. So then now when the network's set up, they're just, the families are gonna get this box and a kid's, a kid's gonna have Wi-Fi to study and, and participate in class, um, whether it's virtual or not. And then his family will, as, um, their family will as well. So that was a really cool initiative that we did and we're excited to keep doing stuff like that going forward, having real measurable impact um, with the money that we're donating. Do you know what the range is on those? How far from the tower or whatever do they Yeah, have? so they're, they're setting up, that's what they're doing right now. They're building towers around certain neighborhoods in Palm Beach County. So that's part of the issue is they're, they're trying to figure out the logistics and get through the, um, I guess you could call it like political backlash of trying to set up some of these towers with some people having ideas of what these towers, they think the towers have uh, other, yeah, whatever, whatever it is, they have different reasons for why they don't want the tower near their building or whatever it is. Um, the Palm Beach County, you know, the district and the superintendent and um, the administrators are working really hard, so... Um, yeah, we've been encouraging, like, if there's people in Palm Beach County that want to go to the school board meetings and help support this initiative, they, they should do that.